Welcome to the Christian Board Gamers Podcast, where we focus on Jesus, community, and board games. Let's have some fun. Woo! What is up? This is not going to be the way I'm going to enter that one. We're going to start off. Pause. Time out. I don't know. Like, I hit it with the Ric Flair. Like, woo! <laughs> nah, man, just kidding. What's up? This is Joe Bragg. want to welcome you to the Christian Board Gamer Podcast. I'm here with my brother, Ray. We are excited to chat about Jesus, the Bible, Christian living, board games, life in general. Uh, there is no telling where we might go. Uh, so, Ray, how you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic, Joe. Happy to be here as always. And by always, I mean the second time. <laughs> the second time. Hey, that's, that's what's up. Yeah, you know, um, no, that's good. I'm I'm blessed to have you here, man. It's uh, it's already been a joy even after after uh, one episode. So I'm excited about what God has. Ray and I were actually just talking about, um, you know, how we start this podcast. We're doing this thing and we're, we're learning and we're growing and we're having fun and we just want to record and go, right? Like we're not going to sit here and stop and pause. So yeah, I totally made this really weird intro right there and we're going to run with it. So you all just enjoyed that. What could normally be an outtake on someone's super professional podcast but on our podcast you get that that's that is free content for you that's the best that's That's the best that's how this thing just started so (laughs) we're gonna rock with that uh but yeah this is uh the christian board gamer podcast again thank you so much for checking this out this is episode two and just like we did in episode one, we're going to lead out with that big news because we want to remind you that we have partnered with Camp Living Waters for the first annual Game Changer Board Gaming Retreat, which will be April 5th through the 7th. Uh, we're super excited. It's going to be a great time. Uh, registration is officially open. You could actually go to camplivingwaters.org. That's camplivingwaters.org slash game dash changer. Or if you just go to camplivingwaters.org, you can find it through there and they were treats it's going to be an absolute blast we're excited we're going to have a lot of gaming going on but we're going to have a time of worship uh, and praise together we're going to hear messages we're going to be able to pray together uh, dig into god's word just really really excited about it so i want to encourage you to register um, and all the pricing is on there but individuals are 80 dollars uh, and then um, there are some family uh, packages available as well so again camplivingwaters.org slash game dash charge uh changer not charger that'd be weird because that had nothing to do with anything uh <laughs> you're charged up so, yeah, man that's that's right it. charged up yeah or again just go to camplivingwaters.org and you can find that there in their retreat tab also, really want to encourage you all to join our Facebook group, right? So uh, Facebook group, we have that going. Uh, by God's grace, it is a thriving and engaging community. Uh, people are talking about Jesus, games. They're praying for each other. We're doing some giveaways in there. And actually, on the next podcast, we're going to be announcing the winner of our latest giveaway, which is a rare copy, an out-of-print deluxe copy wow. of Flamecraft. Yeah, so that's going to be on the next episode that we're going to be uh, announcing the winner of that. And that was going to be it's going to be someone from our Christian Board Gamers um, Facebook group, which is fantastic. Uh, And so really, really excited about it. You don't want to miss that community. It's just been fantastic to watch God move in and through it. Uh, We're a little I mean, I don't know where we'll be at this point when this this episode drops. But as of right now, we're at about 340 people. Uh, And again, it's an engaged community, which is fantastic. Um, This is part of the vision that I felt like the Lord had laid on my heart was to uh, bring believers who love board games together. And I know there's other ministries and other things that are doing that. This is just a part of, I'm part of that puzzle in this. And I've been blessed to have people come alongside me like Ray and others. And uh, it's just been really neat to watch this thing grow and, and God move in that. But seeing people engage with one another and have some really cool conversations has been an absolute blast. So with that on Facebook, you can search Christian board gamers, Right. That's it. You can search that. Boom. We'll pop right up. Now we have a Facebook page. You want the group. The page is there just because Facebook makes things exist. Uh, we don't really use the page every once in a while. But the uh, the group is where you want to be. And if you are into fancy URLs, it is Facebook dot com slash groups slash Christian board gamers, whatever suits you, however you want to do it and all that jazz. So the page is just ooh. a puppet like so many things in this world, man, for what's really going on behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> things just got really yeah, real that's a that's a deeper message i'm just joking but no uh, <laughs> yeah that i uh i wasn't ready for that i'm gonna take a swig of this water here because I, yeah. I don't know how to reply to that i could see i threw you off with that yes yes i just uh just it's just not... messing around it's an awesome page awesome group and there's none of that talk on there it's all all yeah. up and up <laughs> Well, I can't. I can't promise people wouldn't talk about that. So, no, the page has like ten people that follow it. I don't. I don't know. We just we're all about the group. Like I said, the page just exists to exist. Um, but it is what it is. So if you're looking for an engaging Christian community that loves board games, you want to sign up. Well, you don't sign up. You want to join Christian yes. Board Gamers, right? Search it, and we will approve uh, your joining because that's what groups do. So, uh, yeah, yes. this is a board game, uh, ish podcast, right? We're going to talk about Jesus, the Bible, Christian living and board games and all sorts of other stuff. So we actually want to talk about some games that we have played recently. Um, and so we'll do that. And, uh, one of the games that we're going to talk about here is honey buzz. Mm. Uh, mm. Ray and I actually learned this game together in the late hours at a staff Whew. retreat. Uh, oh, it was a blast. The best yeah, time. Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, that game was instantly addictive, man. I, once we <laughs> caught what was happening, it was like so fun. I, um, I was actually sad that that we started so late because I wanted to run it back (laughs) because it it was that fun. Like, I mean, it was like, it was like two o'clock in the morning we got done and I still wanted to play again. I was like, you know what? I would stay up and play this again. It was really, really fun, man. And, um, and it, 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 figuring it out was a little bit of a slow start, but once we got into it, man, yeah, really, really fun. Yeah, and that was a wild evening in general because we mm-hmm. went through a number of games. We started out playing Secret Hitler, which was crazy. Yes, um, <laughs> it was. It was. I never played it. I mean, here's the problem with like social deduction games for me is that everyone targets me. They just automatically assume that I'm lying and I'm <laughs> off on this thing. And I was trying desperately to convince everyone at the table. Like I had everyone pegged within like one yeah, thing. You I'm did. Like, I know. I know who every bad guy is at this table, and I point them all out and i said and if they kill me it's gonna confirm it and i was dead and nobody listened I nobody like, listened I, yeah. It was crazy. yeah that was that like, was look. funny you did you did have everybody right uh, immediately and um it was like their mission to get <laughs> you out i think it's because you are the gamer of the of that group so they figured yeah. if they could get you out maybe they would have a better chance to win even though you were speaking truth i i have yeah. to say well my favorite part about that is when i found out that phil was using text messages <laughs> to talk to the rest of y'all and <laughs> oh i wasn't in on that i didn't know that i must not have yeah, my phone so on phil me. Phil actually sent a text to Scott who Scott Scott had the chance right now to like, you know, basically eliminate somebody from the game. And mm-hmm. uh, if Phil sent a text and said, uh, this is so funny because I'll, I'll tell the whole thing because it was hilarious. It says, Scott, comma, kill Joe. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Phil, you know, we live in a day where like those text messages probably go through some level of like NSA filter. And he was he started freaking out. He's like, oh, man, and I was like, you can delete it, but they have it on file now. I'm like, you probably don't want to send that text. Oh, uh, my gosh. It was, it was I do remember it now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, but, so if you want a fun a game where you can text people to kill somebody <laughs> all within yeah. a friendly yeah. context. Go play yeah. Secret Hitler. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was a lot of fun. It was total chaos. Um, but to go from that game, uh, we played Hollow Type in the middle, which was kind of an interesting segue. Mm-hmm. And then we went right into Honey Buzz. And so, um, what was what was pretty wild uh, about that was yeah, learning Honey Buzz for the first time at like let's start that game at uh, midnight and see what happens. And so we were a little bit hysterical, but it was a really really good time. And we did want to run it back, and we were kind of bummed we actually had to like go to sleep. Um, and uh, and and you know wanting to bring a game right back out or play it again, I think is a really good sign. And, and there were things that I think we, like you said, we caught a little bit late and we were like, Oh, that's how that works. And then it mm-hmm. changed the dynamic uh, and you move through that whole process. And so I think there's so much to that game. And I actually just taught it to some friends uh, the other night uh, and they really enjoyed it, but it was interesting watching other people play it. Right. Like I was mm-hmm. just a spectator and was just teaching it and just seeing strategies and uh and one of one of one of our friends uh when they were playing it she um 
didn't get any new new bees. Like she wasn't thinking about that. And then oh. she's like, I can never do anything because I only have one bee. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why didn't you go get other workers? And she's like, I was so busy over here focusing uh, on this thing that I didn't even think to do that. And there was oh, only two new bee tiles left. She oh. ended up managing, um, you know, to get them and was able to yeah. get some other bees. There might have been grace at the table. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I would hope so among a Christian group of friends, but. Um, that, that was a key element that I noticed early on that to get anything really done, I, I could see, foresee it in the game needing more workers, you know, which is, I imagine oh, yeah. me being newer to the board game community, right? Like any worker placement, the more workers you have, the more yeah. advantage you'll have in the in parts of the game. Um, but so that's why I, that that's what I was going for, which actually did end up working to my advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just liked everything about the game. I mean, the pieces yeah. were really well made. The like the the honey types, the um, oh yeah, the different honey, the you know, resources. Kind of, yeah, it has like a little sticky feel to it, almost like yeah. it really feels the honey. And then uh, the way that you move through the tiles to get your your certain pieces and uh, to it, it was sweet to me when we really got into the game you know and we each had different honeycombs to see how they were created and yeah. uh what you were were making man it, it was just really really fun yeah yeah and i loved the foraging action like you said mm-hmm. like how how i have my little bee and now i'm going to forage and i'm gonna fill that you know with the nectar and all that stuff like i really like that because there's so many different strategies that you're going on like okay what are the tiles i'm looking for what kind of structures am i looking to build how is this going to work and then can i actually forage for the right nectar right right? and so like watching all of that uh really really neat um lots and lots of fun i've played it i've played it several times since that that uh that night um and just thoroughly enjoy that game um they're releasing an expansion here soon that I'm uh, I'm going to wait on a little bit because I still like the base game. I don't need to run to an expansion because I'm still enjoying the base. And I still think there's a ton of configurations and different things that yet to do. So yes. uh, I'm definitely, definitely excited to get that one uh, to the table as often as possible. So, um, you know, another, another game, I actually, it was funny. I had to kind of admit this in, in uh, some gaming groups where I played Ticket to Ride for the first time. Now, Ticket to Ride, if you haven't played that one yet, Ray, is like a train game. And, uh, I had I actually you telling me about it. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of people telling me like, you got to play, you got to play it. And I'm like, I'm not really like a train guy. That's not usually my theme. You <laughs> That's know, weird. Cause you were a conductor thing. ahead all the time. Wow. <laughs> and, I, and I have a Thomas the Train pin that I wear all the time, but I'm not a train guy. So, so uh, weird that you would say that. No, so just joking. Weird. I've never seen you in a conductor you... head. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. But you know, you never know. It could happen. I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe now that I've played this game, I will start wearing a conductor hat cuz <laughs> I, I so. actually like I really enjoyed it. Uh, I played with my wife and my 7-year-old and we had a blast. Um which I was not expecting and I was like, wow, there's more strategy uh in this than I thought. Did your chair just sink down? It looks like yeah. your whole body yes. just No one can yeah. see that, but I thought it was pretty hilarious. Sorry. <laughs> Ray just shrank like 5 inches. Um, I, I was but I, I was d- trying to make my chair more comfortable and I inadvertently ended up <laughs> just dropping through the floor, but uh yeah, yeah. well, you know. Yeah. Okay, so, anyways, you were playing, and it was it, yeah. it, it was was it easy to to grasp uh, even for seven year old? Super easy to pick up. Yeah, super easy to pick up. And Asher started to figure it out, um, and he started moving through that process, and just he did well. But he was he was a little bummed because um, my wife stomped us. Uh, <laughs> I think she beat us by like fifty points, and he was like dad we just did so bad and i'm like <laughs> yeah we did so then we play it a second time okay mind you he's seven we play it a second time okay uh on saturday uh-huh. and he beat me by six and beat stephanie by pff, uh 30 or 40 wow yeah. on his Impressive. own on his own like he came up and he just he i literally Impressive. like took the longest yeah like it was it was pretty nuts i was like he's gonna win and there's so- nothing i can do about it what are the basis? I mean, what's the what's the basis yeah. of the game? Yeah, so basically you have the board which has different color like 
um, tracks on it and you're trying to get set collections. So you're trying to get mm-hmm. trains with like the uh, cards with trains of the same color. And then you, you, once you have certain amount, you can actually play them on your turn and then you lay out your trains on, on a particular track and you okay. have these objectives that you're trying to complete and they get you more points. But if you don't complete the objectives, um, by the end of the game, you lose those points. Uh... So, so you're trying to compete like for those objectives, but people can cut you off. They can take your space. Yeah. Like, so, like, that. uh, it's really, really interesting. Yeah, it's it was actually a lot of fun. Uh, one thing I actually put it out in the in the um, Christian Board Gamers Facebook group because I asked the question like, "Hey, has anyone like brought a trading element into this game?" Because mm. um, I'm sitting on some cards like, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, "Hey, I could I could offer somebody, you know." Uh, two of these orange for a green, you know, something to like kind of bring in some trading elements. And there was a lot of interesting conversation about it where some people were like, oh, that'd be a fun wrinkle. And other people were like, I hate games of trading. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. And I think it's all sure. who you're playing with, right? There are yeah. certain people I'm playing with where I'm like, I don't want to play a trading game with, yeah. with you. Uh, there's other people that just get it and it's just super fun. And it's like, cool. And like, you're going to, you might need what I have and I'm, you know, and we're going to be able to work something out. So I think there's a lot of room for it. Um, but the game was really fun really accessible uh again my seven-year-old picked up but he yeah uh, he plays uh, some heavier games than me, which is <laughs> yeah. you know kind of fun too like he's gonna be a really good board gamer when he's a teen yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure no look who his dad is yeah uh what what's the what's the gameplay time uh on that oh man we played it in uh probably like 40 minutes mm. yeah may, maybe an hour i don't think it wasn't long yeah, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't play that play that long. I mean, the the longest part really is like you're just trying to figure out what you need, what your variants are, like what what kind of thing you're going for. But outside of that, I mean, it's pretty much just like, okay, cool, I have the set. I'm gonna go ahead and take it, um, you know, and, and that. So there's not a lot of like player paralysis. You're not sitting there trying to make these elaborate decisions, which yeah. I really enjoyed. Yeah, um, yeah. So again, it's just nice to have a game that you can pick up and you can play, especially with. Um, with, you know, my oldest, my other one, my other boys are still playing smaller games, but they enjoy them just the same, but I think they would be able to eventually pick this up as well. So, yeah, that's awesome. Well, when I went, um, just recently, you know, last month, uh, me and a group of friends, we've been traveling for the last five years. We went out to Washington and we did some hiking out there. And so didn't really have the opportunity to sit down and play um like a long-term board game you know something that took up a lot of time so you actually let me borrow a love letter which yeah. was super fun i introduced them to that yeah. and it was pretty sweet because you know it's i think it's uh two to six players and mm-hmm. um so it was a lot of a lot of times it was just me and one of my other buddies and then one you know it might be two other the two other guys it's two other couples and so the two other guys would jump in and we'd be playing, man. And it was like, yeah. it was almost like we were playing poker. Cause you know, you have to, it sure. has an element of guessing and you're trying to trade. And um, it was amazing to me that we could just, just keep playing round after round after round. And it was still was so fun. And yeah. it, it almost has that element of like, uh, I got you, you know, kind of like take yeah. that kind of to yep. it and, yep. and uh so man it was super fun they they had a blast playing that and cool. then um i finally got everybody to sit down and play remix rewire and i kept telling them like hey listen we gotta we gotta play this game this game is super fun super fun <laughs> you guys are gonna love it and they're like okay you know and when we get back from these hikes they they want to lounge around watch tv eat a bunch of snacks and stuff everybody's cooking and and, and nobody wants to sit down I'm like listen it doesn't take long just give me like five minutes and I, I guarantee you guys are going to be hooked so we sit down we start playing oh man oh we were <laughs> cracking up laughing i mean it, it was such a good time and it was it was that same addictive thing where they're like okay let's run yeah. it back you know so yeah. i was uh yeah. thankful to have that yeah that was a lot of fun yeah you praise praise god around. and so well, God is good, man. So those who don't know, yeah, Remix Rewired uh, is a game that I designed. It's a take that uh, style game. Um, my wife calls it Fancy Uno. I don't think it's anything <laughs> like Uno, but it's hilarious. 
Um, and so, you know, it's, it's been really neat to watch people engage and enjoy that game. Um, just a different, different style, you know, type thing. And, uh, it does have that weird addictive, uh, quality, um, have gotten a lot of that feedback where people just constantly want to run it back. One of my favorite mm-hmm. things is when you came back and you were like, oh, and, and they had ideas for like house rules, like, oh, yes. I could do this. And he was like, Hey, <laughs> once it's out, once y'all have it, it's out of my hands, man. You yes. play it however you want to play it. Um, but no, that, that's just really exciting to to hear people like enjoying it and that's that's really the whole premise of that game is can we have a quick sit down uh fun laugh and just maybe want to throw it down a few rounds and just enjoy Mm -hmm. it which is which is a huge blessing so yeah praise god no it's uh uh, love letter is definitely uh, a top tier for me even though it's such a simple game i just really enjoy it i like social deduction in that style more than i do like the you know secret hitler where it's like right. i like it where it's like okay i'm just looking at cards i'm seeing what's out there i can start deducing things and maybe utilize my guards in a particular way and i like yes. the strategy in it yes um and so I, I thoroughly enjoy that like you said that poker vibe where it's like i'm kind of really just reading the room playing this yes. out what's left exactly. what's on the board what hasn't been played you know what's maybe that side card that's been pulled out like you got to take all those things into consideration and i enjoy it i think it's just a really fun especially when you have a little bit of a larger group when you can get into that three four five player game it's just super fun in my mind yep yep agreed yeah Yeah, it it was fun and and for being so simple um you know it's continually just so random that uh yeah. it just it just stays fun you know there's there's yep. no really getting tired of it that's what we found yeah. so it's a good time yeah yeah no yeah praise god no i'm glad that you guys all all enjoyed that it's great games for hiking because i mean you don't have to carry much those are small which is nice, exactly so. yeah it was perfect yeah. on the go cool Cool, cool. So we want to get into the topic of the week here. And so we are going to begin discussion on the topic of the week. Topic of the week. And this week's topic, we are talking about navigating theme as a Christian. Uh, There are a Mm. lot of different themes in board games, Uh, some Mm. very light and some very (laughs) not so light uh, themes. And I think there's a lot of room in this conversation to be like, okay, as as a believer, um, you know, kind of where do my convictions uh, lie? Where where are they in this space? And, um, you know, are there convictions? Because some people may say, well, it's just a board game. And so I don't really have any convictions towards theme and I'll pretty much play anything um, because Mm. I'm just you know, disconnected word, it's a form of entertainment, etc. Or, or I have heavy convictions because there are certain themes that I feel are antagonistic to God and I don't want to be a part of that. Um, and it's, it's really, there's a lot of room in this conversation. It's mm-hmm. very, very interesting to me. Um, you know, and, and it was kind of, kind of neat. So we put out the question to the, uh, the, the Christian board gamers Facebook group and got a number of responses and mm. some varying responses. Um, and so I, I will at some point want to pull some of these up and just kind of share what some people have shared in the group. Um, yeah, I want to hear that. But yeah, there's some really, there's some really neat responses that people gave. Um, and I've really wrestled with this and, you know, this, this theme idea. And I talked about it in episode one where I had that game on hold and chose not to get it because there was a thematic element that, mm-hmm. um, I just couldn't get past and and the game was endless winter right and and most people would would you know have no problem with that but there's just there's this mechanic in there and this kind of thematic where you're you're uh when i don't really i don't want to do it disservice because uh i want to uh, describe it properly but basically it's like you're almost like not sacrificing but you have to give an offering to a pagan god and mm. then you can like either as a memorial and it's kind of like a scoring chart and the more offering you give the more you know uh so it was really interesting to me I, it just hit me funny where i was mm-hmm. like you know i just don't know that i want to play a game with an element where i'm offering sacrifices to this pagan entity even even though it it was it's benign in some ways where it's sure. you know, it wasn't over the top it wasn't crazy it wasn't like sacrifice your children to this thing it was just this offering and and i it just i don't know man i had a heavy conviction about it and i couldn't get past it and i was just like you know i really got to pray about this and the lord just prompted yeah. me like i said not to pick that game up and i actually ended up getting skate summer which is a pandasaurus game and just had a blast cuz it's skateboarding and i enjoyed it enjoyed everything about the game which was which was really fun but but again there there are certain themes i think in gaming that can be pretty intense right Mm -hmm. like um you know uh 
for me, it's easy to be like, okay, I can look at witchcraft and I can look at like the occult and I can be like, that's a hard pass. But again, I think there's an interesting conversation even, even in that, um, you know, cause you could say, well, okay, so you won't play, uh, you won't play a board game with wizards and witches, but yet you'll watch Lord of the Rings and there's all that, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or, or even some of the magical elements in Chronicles of Narnia and, you know, and so it's like, how do you reconcile this and that? And what's, what's the difference between those two? And how does this, how does this work in, in your mind? And I, I think there's a mm. line personally, mm. I think there's a line. Um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts? You have any, you have any thoughts leading out? Yeah. Yeah. As you're talking about that, um, first, I thought that it was interesting that you try to get a winter game and the Lord said, no, you got a summer game. That's, that's just <laughs> was an observation yes. I made as you were talking, but no, <laughs> more seriously one. on the topic of, um, the themes and, and the feeling convictions. My initial thought is that it's just like, Anything as Christians that we are doing, that we are supposed to be guarding our ears, our eyes, our yeah. our hearts, what we intake, and that can come in a lot of different forms, you know. And I think that um, your wisdom to pray about it and, and seek God's um, his what He wanted for you, His will in that was amazing. And I think that that's what all Christians should do right. We should be going and, and trying to see which way the spirit is leading us and, and what's going to give glory to God. Um, and it, it is really hard and interesting because yeah, yeah, some of these seem so insignificant, but you don't know what it's going to prompt in you, what it's going to do to your mind, what, what, what kind of things come up and what, what you think. And um, the enemy is crafty, man. He's crafty, you know, and, and not saying that he's into that game, not saying, but, but man, he'll use, you know, you never want to give Satan a foothold of any sort, right? Like that's what the Bible tells us. And so I almost think it, it's, it's wise as uh, a follower of Jesus. If there are some of these sorcery elements, if there's the witchcraft, if there's like certainly sacrifices and stuff like that, even if it is a board game, I would do exactly what you did and and take it to God. And it may be a case by case basis where, you know, one person may be convicted over it and the other person says, hey, I'm perfectly fine with it. And, um, you know, listening to that spirit inside of us, um, that's my I mean, that's really my initial thoughts, you know, but I there's things that I watch on TV or that, uh, you know, let's keep it in the board game space, but like if I was to play a board game like that, I'm sure I, I, without a doubt, my wife, Kim, she would be like, why are you playing that game? Cause things hit her spiritually different than it does me. You know, I, I would, sure. I would probably be one of those people that'd be like, it's just a game. What are you talking about? It's fun. Like right. that I'm not doing anything, but yep. you know, her talking to me about it might make me second guess and say, uh, all right, well, you know, I gotta, I gotta side with my better half, you know, I gotta, she's got some wisdom I don't have yet. So I'm going to, I'm going to yep. walk with her and, you know, yeah. And I think that's good. And I think that the, even having accountability, you know what I mean? Even mm. if you have a question about it, like I did talk to my wife about that game and I was like, I'm just really struggling. And she's just like, you know, maybe God's prompting you to, even though you really want it, say, no, I'm going to choose him over this because he's prompting me. Like if I didn't have the yeah. conviction, I'd have made the per- purchase. Right. But I was, I was yeah, just weighing absolutely. heavy. And, and so, you know, I think there's, there's a lot to that. It, it's interesting to me because one of my, one of my favorite games, this is going to sound really weird when I say it, but one of my favorite games is a cooperative game, but it's Arkham Horror and you're dealing with like, um, the occult and you're dealing mm-hmm. with, uh, like this Cthulhu character. It's just, there's demons and monsters, but the premise is you're trying to like banish them. You're trying to seal mm-hmm. portals, right? You're trying to like, you're the force for good and you're trying to stop these evil forces. But my, meanwhile, you're going crazy and you're, you know, one game I played, this is no joke. We laugh about it every time. Cause at one point I, I looked up and I said, everyone, like to everyone that's playing, I said, guys, it is evident to me that I have to sacrifice myself. I have to lay down my life in order for us to be able to beat these demonic forces or we're, we're toast. Like we're not going to do it. <laughs> and everyone looked around. It was like this solemn moment. Cause everyone looked around the table and they're like, and we're playing a game. Right. And everyone looked around the table and they're like, you're right. 
And I'm like, I know. And then come over here and get all my stuff. Come and like take it. And then in that game, you get to like respawn as another character. So you pick another character. But I had to like literally like I'm looking at the table and I'm like, the best play right now is for me to intentionally lay down my life so that <laughs> you guys can get these things so we can beat the forces of evil. And I was yeah. like, whoa. Like it was just so it was so intense. So intense, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, but I really enjoy it. And again, this is a this is an example of the theme has some occult and some, you know, demonic stuff, but again, the premise is is that we want to defeat these things. We want right, to we want right. to lock them back up and 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 so again, someone else might have a heavier conviction and say I would never play that game because of XYZ thing. And I think that's why there's room in the convo. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, if your convictions say don't play that game, man, you better not play that game. Right. Where where for me, my com- my convictions in it were no like this. There's an element here where it's like this is almost like my real life. Like I, I want to be, you know, as I'm walking as an ambassador for Christ, like we are pointing people to Jesus and we're we're in that spiritual warfare and, and we're to move forward. And and again, not to over spiritualize it, but it's like that's why I'm saying I think that there's room in the combo. I think there's a line. Um, yeah. But then I have a game as benign as Unstable Unicorns. Right. <laughs> and I took cards out. Like I literally like there's a necromancer card. I got rid of it. Um, there was a sadist card. I got rid of it. Right. So like yeah. I just took them up and I ripped them up. I actually, uh, you know, and so I, I just tossed it aside. I even bought one of the expansions um, for my here to slay game. Right. Which is another kind of it's a tear up from unstable unicorns. And I literally ripped like I was just like I'm not using these cards like these cards are, yeah. are out of it because they were just too much for me. Yeah, um, that's awesome. But it didn't. Ru- it didn't ruin the whole game in it in its in full. And go but going back to like your so these two games, let's take those two games, like one where uh you know you're you're sacrificing uh to pagan gods and you're getting points and that's actually helping you to win, which is something that I would see as a negative from a Christian standpoint, versus a game where you're trying to defeat um forces of evil, right? As yeah. it which is like that's what we're doing on a daily in the real life. But even going to you saying like you're you're laying down yourself, you know, in this game, you're like, hey, I got to I got to lay down my life. And everybody kind of has an emotional investment in that. It just goes to show that these games, even while playing a game, right, can evoke some kind of deeper feeling in you. And so without even knowing, just like, you know, that's I think that's why we have to be so wise, even playing a game where it might seem as um innocent as like hey we're just playing a game we're not really sacrificing but but what kind of things kind of come up out of that something that i always question too is what is um what is the driving force behind it what was the um the creative initiative that that yeah that mindset what what was you know the thing that gave you the idea right and um so I kind of look at that like, well, did, did that come from a Christ like mind or did that come from something that right. was trying to, you know, uh, manifest in a hidden way? You know, I mean, I I I have no problem over spiritualizing things just because I as a Christian, I believe that we are spirits, beings, you know, and and that um, sometimes we do live too much in a fleshly realm. And by living too much in that fleshly realm, we can get in trouble because we do dismiss things yeah. like it's not that big of a deal. It's just a game. But then when um, later on something's, you know, not right, you're like, wait, well, why why are things off? And you're like, you you can trace it back to this, you know. So I yep. would err on the side of caution. What what's the harm in not playing? You get to miss out in the conversation with somebody about it. You know what I mean? That that's right. right. That's how I think. And it's everything that yeah. we're, we're supposed to test it we're supposed to be uh like jesus said you know hey be be wise as uh serpents gentle as doves right Did I yep. maybe have that yep. backwards but yeah that's like, no no you had it right yeah wise as serpents and gentle as doves yep you're right yeah yeah, yeah. i mean that's the cunning in, in the beginning the yeah. the serpent was in right. the garden he was the cunning of all the beasts and he said be wise as a serpent yep. i mean like you know that that's how we yep. are to be yeah, no, 100%. And again, I even, even thinking about this conversation, you know, I was reminded of Paul when he, you know, he talks about the fact that all things may be lawful, but not all mm. things are beneficial. Yes. And, and again, it's like it, we're free in Christ. Like you, you, you can sit down, but it, it might not be beneficial for you. Right. And it's like, um, I've run this parallel a hundred times looking at entertainment and music and different things. And it's like, I know very clearly, like, 
you know, my ministry is not in the bar or my ministry mm-hmm. is not, you know, in these because of my past and there's issues that I had had. And I just, yeah. I don't, I don't, it's someone else's. It's not, it's not me. I know my boundary. Like I can go in there and I could go do these things, but I simultaneously, I don't want to be uh, overly tempted or, or put in some different positions that I don't need to be in. Um, but again, I think, you know, we have this freedom in Christ and, and all things may be lawful, but are they all beneficial? Is this going to edify me? Is this going to um, hinder me? in some way like where's where's the benefit and what it what is that and and again i think there's so much room for that in in this type of conversation or in entertainment in general um you know we talked about music and we talk about movies and we look at all these things and and tv shows and it's like you know is this worth my time you know or is this glorifying things i don't need it to glorify and so i think and i'll read some of these comments here in a minute but like people did talk about games that glorify like they use that language specific is Mm. it glorifying right and Mm -hmm. and it's like what is it glorifying right so it's like you know if you think about horror movies like they're glorifying death and fear and the demonic like that's, right. that's a glorification of those things, even if, you know, good triumphs in the end, it's still glorifying, you know, and, and celebrating in some way this demonic twisted. Like if you think about horror movies like you, you probably if you've watched some horror movies, you've seen people die in some pretty heinous ways. Right. And it's like mm-hmm. what that does to your brain. You know what I mean? Like, and how that can, how that can all mess with it. And I mean, board games, obviously different to some degree. Um, but you know, it's like, uh, so Peter from the Facebook group, he said, uh, I avoid anything, uh, I avoid anything or themes around witchcraft or occult topics, especially if the players are actively engaged in the theme as well as mm-hmm. over sexualized content, including visual art and story. I avoid those also. So I thought that was a really, um, really cool comment, and and I would agree. Uh, as far as especially as far as the over sexualized con uh, content, absolutely, uh, yeah. It, whether that's an art or story, definitely would avoid that. Uh, also, um, way to go your heart, Peter. Just, yeah, no doubt. And and again, the way we talk, you know, with the witchcraft and the occult, like what's the per- purpose and premise? But I think he's kind of setting it is especially if those players are actively engaged in the theme, like they are playing the occult or playing the witch or whatever. Yes. Um. Steven said, I will not play anything that uses demonic iconography. Uh, recently, the game Four Horsemen launched, and I thought I had it had great mechanics and gameplay, but the final art was a bunch of pentagrams, so I passed on backing it. Mm. Uh, and they said, in my D&D campaigns, no one could play as a demonic or evil characters, and I prefer games where you defeat evil, not participate in it. And so I think that that. goes to what we were saying. Yeah, I like that as well. And and even just to make the distinction, you know, with the D&D campaign, he's literally letting people know like, hey, we're going to play this, but you're not allowed to be a demon or an evil person. Um, And I think setting that up front is probably a really good thing. And I'm sure the games he has, they're different than some games that are played out in the world for sure. Um, You know, Matt, similar to Peter, avoids the occult, witchcraft, tarot cards, demonic, foul language, sexualized themes. Um, You know, and he actually said these themes are easy to avoid in board games, but nearly impossible to avoid in TV and movies, which is Mm, why board games are his primary entertainment, which I actually thought that was a really cool thing where he's like, hey, I can't avoid it here as easily as I can here. So I'm going to go to board games and that's going to be my primary form. I actually wow. love that response. Yeah, what an awesome thought, man. Wow. Never yeah. thought about that. Yeah. Right, which is which is cool. So you, I, I really I really appreciate what we had to say. And again, a, a number of people had a lot of the same kind of things, but it's cool to hear some testimonies where, uh, you know, Brad here, he says, we got rid of Res Arcana because there were pentagrams on at least one of the cards. They liked the game but didn't want it in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, another, another, your Heidi was talking about how, um, Dominion long time favorite game, right? I, you, you can see it behind me, but I got a couple mm-hmm. copies of Dominion, but like, um, but with that, they actually paused playing the game for a little while because of some of the evil nature of some of the cards in some of the expansions. Um, and you know, it looks like they probably kind of pick through them or, or work, work through, uh, some of those cards in different ways and not use yeah. them. Um, You know, some people, again, talking about kind of the raunchiness and like, hey, I don't want to play cards against humanity because of these things. Um, But then here's here's kind of an antithesis comment. Uh, Daniel said, for the most part, you are so disconnected from the theme. I don't care. The only game I ever had real issue uh, with was Dead Man's Cable, which I've never heard. But he says the game the game 
uh, this game, you actually place bones and skulls on the pentagram. Um, but then he mm. says all games are abstractions, but that one was a little too realistic for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and he said he would probably not play night shift as well. Um, and then again, another comment that says, you know, never say never. This is from Chris. He said, but I haven't physically come across one that I've turned away from. Um, you know, and so again, I don't know what games he's playing, but he hasn't really turned down a theme. Um, you know, and again, some other people were going through, um, and saying again, the witchcraft and the occult and those sorts Mm -hmm. of things, but kind of coming back to, if you're the hero and you're defeating these things, it's much more palatable than if you're playing as one of the characters. And then someone said, well, some of you, you know, basically, uh, Justin, he said, uh, this is interesting reading the comments. There are definitely some games I passed. Uh, on due to theme, but I'm not sure I blank out a category. It's more content that I look for versus category. So I, I think for him, it's case by case basis, which I can totally mm-hmm. appreciate it. And he said, I'm, I'm pretty sure a number of y'all wouldn't want to come to my Halloween game party. And then he took a picture of some of the games, which uh, one I own um, and another one I'm actually interested in. Um, which, so I wouldn't necessarily agree with, um, with that. I would probably go and play a couple of these games, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but, but, you know, again, I, I think, I think it's, it's really na- nice because he says that, um, you know, it's, it's okay. And, uh, and he wants people to follow their convictions, which I, I love that. Cause he says he's yes. got a friend, um, who, who is having a little bit of a hard time and won't play certain games. And he's like, that's okay. That's good. And I love that because, you know, this is something that's neat about the body of Christ. Instead of being like, oh, well, you know, you're a loser because you won't play this game. It's more like, mm-hmm. hey, no, follow your convictions. If you're not feeling like you should play that, don't play it. Yeah. Like, I love that. I, I yeah. think that's phenomenal. Um, Which I know, think is again, also... There, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that that, that's like an encouragement to other people as well, that you don't have to be okay with every game. You know, when you hear that from other people saying that, putting it that way, I think that that's awesome encouragement. Um, I love that as well. Yeah, Yeah, which is fantastic. And so and then also Amy, um, she she posted on here and she actually said she was thinking about this and had been thinking about it recently. And there were certain games. What I found interesting on hers, and I'll, I'll note the last one, is she said, lastly, I'm just not into bluffing games. So uh, because it calls players to bluff and I don't think lying is okay, even within a game. So it's another thing I avoid. And I actually, I can appreciate that. You know, I mean, again, I, I like, um, you know, some of that bluffing stuff. Um, I'm not uh, opposed to it, but I can totally see her point in that. Where it's like, yeah, I mean, you are kind of lying. Now, what's usually fascinating about me is I tend not to lie when I play those games, but everyone <laughs> thinks I'm lying. Uh-huh. And that's what's crazy about it. Yeah. I mean, you witnessed it with Secret Hitler. I was telling yeah. the absolute truth yes. and was not lying in any way um, and and um, have gotten creative and found ways to not not have to lie in those games, yeah. even if I'm the bad guy. Um, there's ways to to do it. But I can also appreciate this idea of like, I don't want to be outright comfortable with lying. Right. Yes. Like, so I don't want to be like, yep, nope, boom. Like I've just had to find creative ways where I don't have to necessarily lie, but I can still get my point across to the people I need to at the table. doesn't always work out that way. So I, I really did appreciate even that where it's something that's like, oh, well, I mean, it's just a little bluffing game. Like it'll be fine. But what a what a heavy weight of conviction of like lying shouldn't be OK in any context. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that actually made me think about I had I had the thought of like uh just we were talking earlier about the take that kind of games, you know, and it's mm-hmm. it's very innocent and it's like, hey, get rid of half your cards or I'm still in a car for you or something like that. And it's like, man, how serious do we get to you know, where where do you draw that line at from like sure, witchcraft yeah. to just having fun? And right. uh yeah, it really does make you think uh, more so about that. And it's, you know, when we're taking the Bible seriously and I, looking at it, uh, you know, having no harsh speech and, and not lying and, and doing these things that, um, you know, always have salt in, in what we're doing. And it's like, man, am I not doing that by playing these games? You know, even even the ones that seemingly yeah. aren't, that in, you know, that bad. Yep. Well, and I, again, I think this is the beautiful part of the conversation. So I happen, you know, I like take that. I mean, I designed. Right. Yeah, yeah, I do, too. Take, take Absolutely. Um, and, and so, again, I think that that it, 
there is a line between entering into the demonic and okay, we're just having fun in proper context, right? Mm-hmm. It's like look at it this way. It's like okay, guys, I'm gonna run a funny parallel here. Guys tend to like get together and we dog on each other, right? Like mm-hmm. you know, well, it's it, and this is kind of a a, a show of affection, right? Right. Uh, we right, don't right. question the friend. We don't question the friendship. As a matter of fact, it strengthens the friendship. It because, does. Like, it does. Yeah. You know, we're able, we're able to <laughs> laugh together and we say something and it'd be like, oh, like you know, and 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 there's generally, generally, I'll speak generally, uh, not hard feelings. And if there are, like, um, you know, uh, buddy, you know, that we work with with Tyler, he and I go back and forth all the time and right. it's funny because people who don't really know us are like man like <laughs> we're just like whatever but then there are times where we both feel like hey maybe we cross the line and we'll go and apologize and we'll and we'll make that right because we're brothers in christ and we don't want to we don't want to hurt each other right. um and and so we'll make sure that the relationship is intact always because we can get on each other and and have fun in that way and right. so which shows again, a real love it, right correct so again it's like is is that innately wrong because we dog on one another and we just kind of have fun and that's our way of showing affection, right? Where, um, you know, and that's just a, a realness factor. I think that we that we sort of have as as guys. Um, and I'm not I'm not justifying it one way or another. It's just this is something that I've historically known over 43 years of my male existence, right? right. And <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and but you know, it's like so again, like when I think of like a take that game. Uh, generally it's, we're just having fun. We're playing, we're playing this game, right? We're just having a good time, which is interesting because I've been thinking a lot about it because with victory, like, you know, some have noted, like there's take that elements and this is a Christian game. And I said, well, uh, on one hand I said, but it's, it's a biblically inspired game. And the take that elements are actually inspired biblically. Like there are real elements in the game. And, and then the other thing is, you know, it's like, okay, we're just playing, we're playing a game. We are having fun and there's nothing like evil within, within the game. Right. It's not like, mm-hmm. uh, Hey, bow down and worship Satan card. Like that doesn't exist right. right now. Now, now you've crossed the line, right? Like now there's a huge problem, but can we have fun with those elements? And I, and I think you can, uh, absolutely think you can. And, and again, and still have that be okay. Right. Cause someone once, someone once told me wisely uh, a couple weeks ago, they said, well, if me heroes was a game about ninjas, no one would complain about the take that it's just uh-huh. because you've got biblically inspired elements. Now the take that kind of causes some conflict for people. And, and it's interesting because there is a level of satire uh, to, and someone had noted it why, that they said well, in a review, like, I don't think that he meant sat- satirically these things, but there kind of is a satire because the question could be, well, why are we attacking one another while we're battering, battling the forces of evil? And I would say, yeah, that's a great question. Why are we attacking one another while we're battling the forces of evil? <laughs> right? like, Preach. The church, Preach. <laughs> right. The church has a tendency to do that. Right. Yeah. But again, ultimately, ultimately a game. Uh, let's say, uh, and we'll talk, we can talk more about this too, but, but I don't claim to have meek heroes be the arbiter of truth and how, how you should live as a Christ follower. It's a, it's a game. Cause as my buddy right. aptly said, uh, he said, well, you don't defeat principalities by drawing cards. Like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, no, I get it. So I think there are elements that this is just a game. And then there are other elements that I think take it too far. Like we've kind of noted some, like when you have mm-hmm. overly sexualized content or you're playing as the occult or you're having to offer sacrifices or even as Amy said in one of her other things, like you have to cast spells and and do these kind of things. Like then it can get into a different level. I think now you're now yeah. you're working through some different things, right? Um, and so so it's all. It, it, I think it's going to boil down to personal convictions and uh, personal play style. Like you know, Agreed. not a lot of people like take that, or not a lot of people want to play this kind of game. Like I'm not an RPG guy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily like, I like area control games a little bit, but I'm not going to play risk. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> not really my kind of thing. You know, there's just, there's just different, different types of play styles as well that I think t- we can take into consideration. But I think when looking at theme, you really do have to follow your convictions. Like if you were playing a take that game and you're like, Oh, I feel horrible because i'm taking this person's card yeah you probably mm-hmm. shouldn't play the game <laughs> but if, if you're like if you're sitting there at the table and you're like i'm gonna take i'm gonna take joe's card and honestly i don't really care about that because that's the game we're playing and everyone yes. at the table knows it 
right? Like, if you steal my cards and we're not playing a take that game, now now we're going to have a problem. Like, yo, why are you mm-hmm. stealing my cards? Like, <laughs> this is not a take that game. I'd be like, yeah, you're taking my stuff. Um, you know, now now you might have some different things. So I do think I do think that they're – like, that's more mechanic – than it is mm-hmm. theme. If the take that game was, I'm going to cast spells on you and I'm going to curse you and I'm going to do all these things. Now you might have an interesting dynamic. And like in Dominion, if you look at the witch card, it's kind of a take that card. Oh, it is not kind of, it is. And you're giving someone a curse. Mm-hmm. I could see how someone would feel about that. Well, like I don't <laughs> want to play the witch because now I'm cursing you. Yeah. Um, where for me, that doesn't really bother me in that game because it's just to take that element and I'm not overthinking it thematically. I'm just giving you a curse because I'm trying to win the game. Um, yep. However, I mean, I could understand somebody being like, yeah, I don't love that because I don't want to play a witch card and curse you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't don't then, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I support you. Um, and that's following, following your, your convictions. I just, again, I, I never really thought about the theme that intensely to where it, uh, where it bothered me. I was just like, yeah. man, I, I give you the negative one point that works for me in the <laughs> end. Right. And so, yeah. um, but, but again, that's, that's different convictions in, in different, in different spaces and kind of like was even said, like, I think for me, it's a context, uh, and case by case basis where, you know, there are certain things that I'm just not going to play because that's too much for me. And then there's other games where I'm like, yeah, I don't really overthink it. And I just, I just play it. Um, like I said, I love Arkham Horror. It's a phenomenal cooperative game. It's a huge game. It takes forever to play, but it's so much fun. And I like that we're battling, you know, these forces of evil and yeah, we're going a little crazy along the way, but we're trying to, trying to take them down and it's enjoyable. You know, and I actually have even on my back, you, know, you probably can't see it, but like the pandemic version, same kind of thing. These portals have mm-hmm. opened up and there's these demonic entities and you're you're trying to knock them off the board and corral them and close these portals. And, and there's just something, yeah. you know, something kind of satisfying about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with I agree with the rationale of the case by case, like I said earlier and um I think ultimately that there's some elements that are really fun and some that are just just go a little bit overboard. I, I couldn't see myself yeah. having anything like with a pentagram on it or uh, in, a, right. in a game that I played or something, you know, I just for me personally. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd want to be very very careful in that situation, you know, just just because of what that represents and where that goes. So I, I agree, um, you know. Again, I think so much of this plays out in in the what's the objective and and where what is the game glorifying, what is the game promoting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's I also got a comment on another thing. Someone was talking about they don't want to play games that do glorify death, and they talked about a game called Dead by Daylight, where you're basically it's like playing a horror movie like in a game, and that you know that really does um, you know uh, kind of. I mean, it kills the vibe almost literally, right? Like you're intentionally trying to, to be the, you're, you're either the killer or you're the, you're the survivor, yeah. you know, the people and you're trying to kill the people. Um, yep. you know, and so it's like, I used to be a big horror, horror fan, you know, back in the day, if I was playing board games, like way back when I would have been playing those games, mm-hmm. um, you know, wouldn't have thought anything of them. Cause that's what I did. I just watched horror all the time. So like I have a, I have an interesting sensitivity into those things. And so I can completely 100% appreciate not wanting to play that game. Like I don't have any, and even though it says Arkham horror, the game's not like it's a different than that, but I don't, I don't even own that game. I just play it for a friend owns the copy. Um, but I don't have, you know, I don't have any of those games on my shelf. Most of my games are like woodland creatures and all sorts of yeah. <laughs> sorts of fun stuff. I got a bunch of different themes. actually. Yeah. Well, man, uh, it, it, it's, it's, yeah. It's awesome though, like praise God for his work in your life and in so many people's lives that have commented um, to even say with that respect of, man, I don't play these games for this reason and are aware of the implications that they're aware of their own spirits and um, in tune with that. Because, I mean, that's 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 awesome, man. Um, And I had this thought of just like, you know, when uh, Jesus is talking about the body. You know, and the church is like the body. And, you know, if the eye was the ear, where would the hearing come from or the seeing come from? And so, you know, all the different pieces make up the body. And just like 
in the real world of the body of Christ. And we all have uh, different people group to reach and different missions to be on that God has given us. It almost makes me think of that, like in the sense of the different convictions that we have, right? Like I know that there's yeah. a overall, right? These are the things that we need to steer clear of, stay away from. There are some really just hard, fast truths of um, evil in this world and things that, man, probably nobody should be playing these games. But going back to each individual conviction, I feel like that's just yeah. another uh, testimony to us being collectively a body being each individually created in the image of God with different gifts and um, abilities and things that are going to affect us differently, you know, and it's just, it was really cool to hear you read all, everybody's kind of responses there, man. I really enjoyed yeah. that. Uh, and, and just like that um, sense of joy of like, man, there are people who are really aware out here and uh, yeah. really trying to, to give God glory in all that they do, which is awesome. man. I love that. Cause sometimes when you look different than the world and you know, you're, you're not doing things and the majority you're doing things differently than the majority of people you're around, you feel like you're alone sometimes, you know? Yep. So when you hear that and you hear people like, no, I don't play this game because of the crossbones or this element or that element. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, it's awesome, man. We, you know, we, yeah. we're out here, we're out here and I love it. Yeah. Yeah, no, and praise God. I mean, and that's one of the coolest parts, I think, about having that Facebook group is I could ask that question and not get trashed, right? Like, I could literally say, hey, like, as believers, how do we navigate theme? Do you care? Do you not care? What do you care about? Tell me why. If I posted that in a general uh, mm -hmm. Facebook group, I might not get that same response. I might get... Absolutely not. No. Yeah, a whirlwind of other things. And then anyone who shared, hey, I don't want to play a game about this, this, and this they would then get that. So, <laughs> you know, I think I, you know, I yeah. think it's like you, 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 you know, creating a safe space where we can have these convos because they're, they're not so, so cut cool. and dry. They are kind of challenging. There's, there's a lot to the, to the conversation. I mean, I think we barely scratched the surface on how deep you could go in this convo, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, all I know is at the end of the day, Paul, again, in, uh, in first Corinthians, you know, it's whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So in the midst of my game plan, can I play this to the glory of God. And you mentioned it in the first, you know, first episode where it's like, can I lose well? Can I win well? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I, am I going to play to the glory of God? So if you're playing a game and you're like, wow, this theme is convicting me, I don't think I should be playing it. Then don't play to the glory of God. If you're Amen. playing a game and you feel like it's fine and that you can play it and that it's not bothering you, it's not, you're, you're free to play and you're playing it, then play the game to the glory of God. Right? Like, so on either end, I want to glorify God with my life. And if God is convicting me not to play something, I shouldn't play it. And if I don't have that conviction, I shouldn't be mad at someone for playing it, right? Like Absolutely. Can, they're going to play it. Even if I disagree, okay, I disagree with the fact that you're playing that game. Maybe the conversation is different. You know, maybe it's like, hey, why or whatever. And we can talk about it. And how do we have, how do we have those combos in safe ways where we allow people to follow their convictions uh, you know, uh, one way yep. or another. And, and yep. so long as they're not harming themselves or other people, like in a physical way, right. They may be harming themselves spiritually. I mean, there's other, there's other things to consider in that, but again, can, can we have these conversations without yelling at one another? Can we have these conversations where at the end of the day, we hug it out? Can mm -hmm. we, you know, can we enjoy the board game space and, and just understand that not everyone sees everything the same way I do. Right. I mean, yep. that's, yep. that's real. And so, you know, it's like, I, I, I like Disney villainous and I sometimes don't like to post it, you know, because people are like, well, that's Disney. And I'm like, yes, I get it. Like I don't love Disney. <laughs> well, then you're playing villains and now you're playing the, vill there are certain characters I don't play because I don't like what they represent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's, there's things I don't enjoy, but again, for me, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I've kind of, I'm divorced from some of the, uh, I don't know. I, I see it more again. My conviction is not, Oh, this is a horrible game. Cause I'm playing as the bad guy. I'm like, it's, it's, yeah. A game. Yeah. Yeah. You're <laughs> not I'm overthinking just... it and tying yourself right. to the, to the theme of this Correct. character and, and everything you're, you're looking at the, the, um yeah. gameplay and just trying to 
trying to win. Right. Just like yeah, the but rest there of are characters I'm just – yeah, right, right. Although I very <laughs> seldomly do. But like – but, you know, again, there are also characters that I just – I don't play because I'm like, I don't I don't need to play that character. I don't right. – I don't, you know, it's just – it is what it is. Yep. Um, you know, and so again, I think, I think there's so much, so much to the combo. We, we could continue to spend it, but uh, if you're listening to this and you're like, whoa, I have something I'd love to add or something that, um, you know, you're challenged by or, or whatever it is, like, we'd love to hear from you. You can send us an email at Christian board gamers at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment. If you're watching this on Spotify, you can ask them to leave a comment they won't because there's no comment thing on that which is whatever um, but they should but, add it <laughs> but they should add it yeah but you could so you could again you could just uh email us christian board gamers at gmail.com or go to christian board gamers.com i've updated the website a bit feel a lot more comfortable with it so you can go there and you hit the contact form and all that jazz um and and chime in uh or even better, join that Facebook group uh, and come come and have the conversation with us because I, I think this is worth talking about. And I think everyone's going to have a little bit of a different take. Uh, a lot of people had the same kind of similar takes on, on those, which I think was cool. Um, but it's a safe place to have the conversation. Mm-hmm. And uh, and nobody nobody that dis- like said like uh, the two people that said something different or three people that said something different than everyone else. Nobody jumped on them and was like, I can't believe that you even think that way. It's, it's just not that kind of environment. Uh, and I wouldn't want that. And, um, you know, as far as being an admin or moderator of the group, we would have a real conversation. Be like, yo, we don't need to come at people like that. Mm-hmm. Like we can do this the right way so again you can find us on facebook uh christian board gamers uh and again do the group not the page if you do the page you're going to miss out on uh, everything uh so yeah but um but you know this has been really fun I've, i enjoy this conversation i think there's like i said so much to it but at the end of the day i yeah. want to make sure that we are people that are bringing glory to god and all that we do um, yeah, regardless and so um you know my hope is is that this conversation to some way is edifying someone's listening and they're and they're you know feeling maybe even convicted by some of the things they've heard like wow i never considered that or or whatever let's keep the conversation going uh, i think yes. this is one we'll revisit throughout future episodes um but definitely want to have some guests on to even talk further about this and and all of that um because I just think it's an important combo. We have to be able to have these conversations as believers um, and and really even look at um, the things that we enjoy that are hobbies to us and, and analyze those things, too. Because, uh, you know, like you shared in episode one, like video games became an idol. We have to be careful that board games don't become, you know, an idol and they're, we're, mm-hmm. where we're going to sacrifice or compromise our convictions just to play the game. Um I don't think that's right either. So, so yeah. yeah. So you can find us on all of our socials. It's just Christian Board Gamers. We're uh, Christian Board Gamers on Instagram. Christian Board Gamers on Facebook. Uh, ChristianBoardGamers.com. Really kept it simple. All you have to do really is remember Christian Board Gamers, and you can find us <laughs> anywhere. Uh, that, is, that may or may not have been super intentional. Uh, I like to keep it simple. Uh, except it's always hard when you have to like type something in on your TV with that little thing. And you're like Christian board gamers. <laughs> That's the you worst. wish you chose it. Yeah. You wish you chose like a much shorter uh, yeah. email. And yeah. then you get your password wrong and you got to start all over. Yeah. You got to start all like, over. Oh, yeah. My wife gosh. is always like, Oh, she says this to me all the time. Bet you wish you chose a shorter <laughs> email address. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't though. And yeah. this is my, this is my thing to bear here. I have a long email address. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and so, and no, not it's the worst good. thing. Uh, no, it's not. So I don't know, Ray, you got any final thoughts here before we wrap this up? Uh, I just want to second this conversation to be ongoing and I love people chiming in and the transparency and that, um, nobody's perfect, man. We're all flawed individuals with, with different yeah. backgrounds and different traumas and different histories. And so I love to be part of a group that can live together and uh, collectively well encourage each other iron sharpen irony or ironing you're ironing and you're sharpening <laughs> while you're no. sharpening ironing that's good that's a new one <laughs> yeah again no, that's iron... that new new that's that new new message <laughs> that is that iron new... sharpening ironing <laughs> i gotta stay like, out yo, that you bible that man. Thing yeah. Pre- yeah you got that thing pressed <laughs> like yeah. oh, okay that's, Ray got that's that dry salt. clean version 
that's a proverb 395 yeah uh no iron sharpens iron man and so just keep being yeah. transparent and being real because we're real people man yeah. and and i love it we we need that we need that we don't need fake uh lives and uh the fake internet lives that people live you know i mean so it's I, i'm i'm glad for this group that's my final yeah. thought yeah praise god well, cool. Well, until next time, we want to leave you with Matthew 516, which says, Let your light shine before people in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. To God be the glory. Have a great week. God bless. Peace. Peace.